Coming up on 100 Mile Meals, the way to end up with great chowder, get off to the right start. How a North Coast restaurant spices up local ingredients, and we mean local. We'll gather at the boardwalk to learn about what is trending for restaurants for 2015. Is your garden edible? We'll visit some that are and show you how to help your yard produce. Expansion at Bernardus means just more of a good thing and more great places to taste as we show you why our region is a 100 mile meal. Hi, I'm Romney Dunbar and welcome to 100 Mile Meals. Our program is a marketplace for ideas and a great place to meet fellow foodies. We're off to meet some right now, starting with a trip up what we call the slow coast to Costa Noa. I've been here for about a year and a half at Cascade Bar and Grill. When I got here, the menu had been handed over between a few different chefs in a really short period of time. So we really just streamlined it and gave it a little bit more of a simple, classic feel. The Cascade Bar and Grill represents one of the most unique dining experiences in the Greater Bay Area. Located on the grounds of Costanoa Lodge and stewarded by executive chef Morgan L'Esperance. The restaurant's committed to sustainability and is surrounded by nature's bounty. You can't beat this place. It has the best produce in the whole country, literally next door. And then we have great seafood right across the street. You, just, you really can't beat it. On the way up here, I stopped to pick some fennel fronds. I mean, you can't beat that going into work, you know. I specialize more in seafood. I like the delicate flavors and the difference. There's some of them are heavier, so it's like a steak, like a swordfish, or all the way down to like a sole, where it's really super flaky. So there you have all kinds of elements of flavor profiles that can go with that. For McCormick spices, we use a ton in the kitchen. We're gonna do a rub that we do on our ribs for our second restaurant on property. It's called Pine Tent. It's pretty easy, all McCormick. We start with a couple tablespoons of black pepper, a couple tablespoons of cumin, a half a cup of dark chili powder, one cup smoked paprika, one cup granulated onion, one cup granulated garlic, one cup brown sugar, and one cup of salt. We mix that all together, and we actually also use this on our house potatoes. Chef Morgan says the menu is constantly changing based on what is seasonally available. And she invites newcomers and longtime visitors to see what's new. We have a lot of locals, regulars that come from Santa Cruz. We have people as far as Mountain View, Palo Alto, they come just for dinner. I love hearing from them, so if you come and ask for me, I'll for sure come talk to you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Romney Dunbar. We're proud to announce our new program, 100 Mile Meals. Join us as we explore our local food market. From a farm or field to the table at a local restaurant or even your own home. We call it 100 Mile Meals. 100 miles is not a rule or requirement, just a reminder that fresh and local are two great ingredients and go together like sweet and sour, salt and pepper, or as Forrest Gump might say, peas and carrots. You know, and people are always enjoying it because you're sitting here and they'll ask you, well, where's this Pinot from? It's from 20 feet right there. You know, they, and then uh, that really seems to get them excited because it's, it's fun to sit here next to the same vine that you're drinking. You know, it really is. Oh God, you can't beat this place. You can't. It has the best produce in the whole country, literally next door. And then we have great seafood right across the street. Our program is a fun and informative way to get to know food culture of the Greater Bay Areas, her agriculture and the events, restaurants, and wineries that populate our area. Use our program and website, 100milemeals.com, as a resource to learn about new food ideas and sources, and to get your message out to a fresh local audience. We use a long table with room for everybody for a 100-mile meal. We're really concentrating and focusing on what Monterey has to offer. Uh, and again, the food, uh, even our beef and steaks are from within 100 miles from this point right here. Being that we have our beautiful neighbor, the Salinas Valley, in our backyard, um, with this bounty of fresh vegetables and fruits of all kinds, um, I really try to incorporate all that freshness into the menu. All of our food is 100% natural and as organic as it can be. So enjoy our program and enjoy using our program to reach new customers on TV, web, and social networks. 100 Mile Meals.
Performance in a 100 mile market. Performance Food Service Ledyard, a local distributor of food, equipment, and supplies since 1929. Family run for decades, and now part of Performance Food Group, one of the largest food service distributors in the nation. That new relationship gives Performance Food Service Ledyard the benefit of purchasing power and the level of quality control that vendors and their customers appreciate. Performance Food Service Ledyard views itself as a partner with hundreds of food service operations and while earning trust has earned awards. Performance Food Service Ledyard has been recognized both locally and nationally with outstanding sales and service awards. But it's not the awards that count. It's the reward of working with the customer to profitably grow their business. Performance Food Service Ledyard, serving the 100-mile marketplace. Bernardus Winery. Founded by owner Ben Pond more than 20 years ago, with the goal of creating wines that flatter the palate and stimulate the imagination. Achieving that goal is a three-prong effort that begins in the vineyards where Matt Shea stewards these vines from planting to cultivation. This is the Ingrid's Vineyard, and this is one of the first vineyards planted in Carmel Valley. It's planted the Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. It's especially important to our winery because it's so close to our tasting room. We can use it as a educational facility. We can take guests and walk through here and they can really get the hands-on experience. We're about nine and a half miles from the ocean right now, so we really get that maritime influence which allows us to grow the Pinot Noir and the Chardonnay. Unlike our other vineyards that are 25 miles further east, where we grow the uh, Bordeaux varieties, the Merlot, the Cabernets and whatnot. We were kind of the pioneers in this area. We've stayed at a relatively small size so we can focus on our customers and really giving people that experience. We've eliminated herbicides from our program. We do all mechanical cultivation here. We pull leaves to create a, uh, a fruit zone that has ventilation and doesn't get mildew so we don't have to use sprays. So we're always looking for ways to uh, soften our approach to farming here. After harvesting, the grapes are moved to the winery where winemaker Dean DeCorth handles the next phase of the Bernardist experience. When we first started here back in the early 90s, there was only a handful of wineries really in the whole county and now they're just, they're almost countless, including all the small people that are doing a few hundred cases up to the people that are doing several, you know, maybe 100,000 cases. We're kind of in the middle zone, we're about 50,000 cases total. Uh, roughly half of that's Chardonnay, which has been really, really a successful program for us, along with the Sauvignon Blancs. We do quite a few Pinot Noirs from little single vineyard areas, along with, of course, the Marinas. The way I look at it is, if you like dry, crisp white wines, you don't like oak, then you can get a Sauvignon Blanc. If you like something round, buttery, a real traditional, like white burgundy style Chardonnay, we do that. In the reds, it's kind of the same. You've got sort of a soft, round, approachable red wine in all the Pinot Noirs, and then something more structured, a bigger, intense red wine, we have Marinas. Our vineyard manager, Matt Shea, is a really excellent partner for me. He's in charge of all the vineyards here in the valley, the, our own estate vineyards. We've worked a lot to improve those vineyards. I think it's another reason that we've been able to increase quality over the years. I never stop experimenting and stop pushing the envelope forward. You know, I've been doing this 30 years now and I'm still discovering new things every year. Every year I experiment in little lots to see if I can make something better. So it's constantly progressing and constantly, I think, getting better. I think we're making the best wines now we've ever made at Bernardus. Finally, the fruits of this labor are ready to be enjoyed in the newly expanded Bernardus Tasting Room. We have a newly refurbished tasting room that has basically three venues where you can have an intimate tasting with two people or you can go outside to our great patio and up to 100 people can spend time out there and drink wine. Bernardus Winery was the first tasting room out here. Others followed, but for many years there were only five here. Now there are 18 tasting rooms and uh, it's a lot of fun because more people are coming out. We are a destination. The greatest surprise and we hear it 99% of the time, truly 99% of the time, is most people who don't like white wine or Chardonnay will come in and say, I don't like any Chardonnay, don't pour me Chardonnay. We pour them our Chardonnay, they buy it and walk out the door with it. We have a great winemaker in Dean DeCorth and we have a great vineyard manager in Matt Shea 
And the combination between those two guys and the source of fruit that we get makes for great wine. From the vineyards, to the barrels, to the bottle. The Bernardus experience is based on a commitment to quality. We're focusing on whatever it takes to create the best wine. So when you come out to the village, you're gonna know at Bernardus, you're always gonna get a great bottle of wine. Everything we do is by hand. Everything's picked by hand. I like to think that Bernardus Winery has a uniqueness to it because you have different personalities and each one of those different personalities expresses the Bernardus experience, but in a different way. Visit the tasting room at 5 West Carmel Valley Road or visit the website at bernardus.com. The Hot Enchilada is more than just a restaurant. It's an oasis. It's kind of a secret and a big surprise. We try to be really different because we are a destination and I understand that because we are a destination, you know, people want to find something different that they can't find in their neighborhood. Tucked away in the charming village of Moss Landing, we've seen this restaurant grow from humble beginnings to what it is today, a bustling cafe that is unmistakably unique. Kim calls her menu an eclectic fusion of cultures, and this is truly a culinary trip around the globe. We've got some Cuban dishes, Brazilian dishes, Spanish dishes. We've got a couple of French dishes on the menu. It definitely all has somewhat of a Latin flair because, you know, that's where we come from. That's where our roots are from. Being that we have our beautiful neighbor, the Salinas Valley, in our backyard, with this bounty of fresh vegetables and fruits of all kinds, I really try to incorporate all that freshness into the menu. One of the most popular dishes is the pescado cubano. It's a line caught snapper on a bed of black beans. It's crusted with pistachio nuts, and it's drenched in an avocado tomatillo sauce. Our Peruvian causa is also a very popular dish, and it's a beet-infused layer of organic Yukon potato with a beautiful olive tempanade layered, and then another layer of uh, saffron-infused potato. The hot enchilada also features a full bar with local beer, a well-selected wine list, and a number of unique cocktails. And while the restaurant's the center of the Moss Landing universe, there are quite a few interesting satellites as well. When we did our last segment, we had opened our first gallery, uh, which is behind the restaurant. And now we have another gallery called Galeria Dos, which means our second gallery, which is across the street. We also have a high-end couture consignment boutique as well. Both galleries serve as a venue to expose artists from Moss Landing and around the Monterey Bay area. The Hot Enchilada is also a great place for parties receptions and meetings. And add the hot enchilada to your list of night spots and check out tango and Cuban nights at the Hot Enchilada Social Club, available for parties and events. We can seat 60 people in the gallery and we can also fit 50 people in the restaurant comfortably, as well as another 50 on the patio. So, you know, we have a pretty versatile venue here. We are right, you know, in between Santa Cruz and Monterey County, so we're a perfect place for people who need to have a gathering spot, whether it be a meeting place for eight to 60. So whether you're planning a large gathering or just looking for lunch, do yourself a favor. Stop into the hot enchilada. Daily, we hear people say, oh, we drive by all the time and we've never stopped. When you stop, you are pleasantly surprised. It's a beautiful little oasis, beautiful gardens, Great food, I must say. It's a little bit of everything. The Hot Enchilada, 7902 Moss Landing Road, in the heart of Moss Landing. Grill has rejuvenated this traditional family restaurant space on the century-old Santa Cruz Wharf. And at the same time, it's helping rejuvenate the entire Wharf business district. The right combination of real mesquite grilling, fresh local seafood, and fantastic waterfront views is drawing record numbers out onto the pier. This is like a, a spot where people come and take mini vacations. 
every night when it's like we pull up all the shades at sunset, it's beautiful. You can never get tired of that. One staple of all great seafood restaurants, clam chowder. Chowder soups and bisques here are a staple all right. Some 70,000 bowls a year are sold, or four to five 35 gallon pots a week are made. And a great finish begins with a great base, a custom base. This is when this started, really good chowder when they're using that kind of base, right? And you see, I mean, uh, we cook a lot of chowder. We do a lot of chowder. We're doing like maybe between four, five, sometimes six batches of 35 gallons a batch. And every week. Every week. Part of a really good chowder is it's just, it's, it's, you can just tell in the bowl, right? I mean, just consistency and all of that. Right? Yeah. Pretty much the consistency is like that, and you know it's like creamy, yeah. nice creamy, nice taste. First thing I started is with the vegetables, with the vegetables and the bacon and butter, and uh, sauteed it for a little while, a little bit. Then uh, after that, I add the clam base. It will give it that good tester, good smoke, good smoke in the soup. You know, and uh, after that, I add the water and the clams and, you know, and, and uh, potatoes, bring them to boil. Then after that, it's like my root yeah. is to finish it. Then uh, we add some heavy cream. It's the way they make it really good. Yeah. The heavy cream is tasted really good. Good. So I have to do what you, what everybody wants to do, and that is I have to, the ultimate test of the chowder is, is right here, isn't it? Yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, it's good. The bacon and the uh, well, bacon. And then, yeah. Oh yeah, it's good. The Pacific Ocean out the window, mesquite in the grill, and custom starters in the chowder make this restaurant worth the trip and a 100-mile meal menu. Oh, yeah, the bowl. Nice, hot, nice, smoked. We actually feel very honored to have the ocean as our backyard. We're driven to purchase local fresh seafood as opposed to something frozen or flown in. You could say that fresh seafood is in Robin O'Connor's DNA. I love fresh seafood. It's my favorite food. I've been working in the restaurant business uh, pretty much all my life after high school, so it's in the blood. As the general manager of Half Moon Bay's Princeton Seafood Market, Robin's philosophy is to bring you the flavor of the ocean from across the street and right to your plate. One of our dishes, a uh, local favorite, is the halibut pesto. We take a nice uh, local fresh uh, halibut filet, charbroil it, uh, seasoned with McCormick lemon pepper. Put it with some uh, red potatoes, top it off with a pesto cream sauce, and uh, some local vegetables. People love the halibut, it's nice white fish. Uh, the lemon pepper goes perfect with it. A local halibut's caught right off of our shores. All the boats are right in the fleet in our harbor, and we buy our fresh catch every day. We have a black and blue steak sandwich. It's a black Angus flat iron steak, seasoned with a Montreal McCormick steak seasoning. We put some shaved onion strings on it, Stella blue cheese crumbles, a chipotle mayo, and a little garlic fries on the side. Well, all of our spices are McCormick, but we use a Cajun spice for a lot of our spicier dishes a uh, McCormick lemon pepper for our chicken and seafood, and all of our Black Angus steaks get uh, Montreal steak seasoning. Whether it's seafood or produce, Robin says it's all about keeping the dishes as local as possible. Yap Moon Bay is known for artichokes and Brussels sprouts, so among other things, we feature those two uh, vegetables as much as we can. I think it's healthy for the community as well as the entire ecosystem. Row, famous for its history and fishing culture, immortalized by local Nobel author John Steinbeck. 
And next to this popular bust of Steinbeck is another local attraction, especially at mealtime, Sly McFly's. In the beginning, we started just with this first half that you're seeing now on tape, and through the years, we've expanded twice. But being a family restaurant during the day is the fact that we love kids, we love strollers, we love it all. That's what it's all about. And then when you go into your dinner hour, we still want to have the, the, the children to have an opportunity to be able to be into this atmosphere. And we keep the kitchen open until 11, so they have an opportunity to listen to a little bit of the music. And then the unique part of it is, is knowing that the children have to be gone, you know, after the kitchen closes. But then we turn into more of a nightlife type fun place. And our music is, is so unusual compared to any place around the Central Coast. We do music seven nights a week. We feature players from all over the world, some of the old Doobie Brothers, some of the Whispers. I mean, they've all been here. Sly's reputation and blueprint continue to grow, once literally the corner spot here. Now, Sly McFly's expansion allows for even better views and larger gatherings near the waterfront. The philosophy of our food at Sly's is using a, an awesome product like McCain's. McCain's has been, been on board with us for the last couple of years, and we use a lot of their products, products, but right now we're presenting the french fries. Our philosophy in food is, is, is we're not a pub. We're not a fast food restaurant either. Our food here is a little bit different from everybody else's menu on the road. It's exactly what people, we hope, are looking for when they come to on a, on a vacation type trip and, and then we do anything from American cuisine from seafood to pastas to steaks to fish and chips to burgers so it's a good variety and you kind of meet the niche to everybody that's coming to the row. It's, it's hard to explain how proud we really are that we can supply a need to people that are looking for and, and I'm very fortunate with the great staff I have here. I mean I have staff, I have busboys that have been with me 18, 19 years. My chef and sous chef have been with me 18, 19 years. We have bartenders been with us since 1999. That's what we really pride ourselves on, is, is the people that surround us and make things work. Sly McFly's, an unforgettable name in an unforgettable place, and another great spot to enjoy a 100-mile meal. Once a year, Performance Food Service Ledyard invites vendors and clients to Santa Cruz for the Boardwalk Bonanza. A special time to gather at the historic Coconut Grove to build relationships and display new products and services and to grow and book new orders for the coming year. You get food for thought here. You get a little bit of uh, something new that those companies have come up with and uh, it's interesting. Ledyard Performance has great customer service and because they've got such a, a hands-on team with sort of higher-end products, the people who look to use performance as their supplier, the more of the higher quality food service crowd. And so those are the conversations we like to be having. The carnival atmosphere of the boardwalk and festive approach to the Bonanza makes the annual gathering special for longtime vendors and first-time visitors always eager to pursue the latest in the creative food service industry. It's a good way to showcase all the different items that we carry and how versatile they are. So this is the same cookie presented in different ways, from chocolate peanut butter to coconut chocolate, and then we have a raspberry filled. The new lamb is, it's not gamey, it's not tough, you don't put mint jelly with it, it's not your grandmother's lamb. It's healthy, it's grass-fed, it's no hormones, no antibiotics, it's all the bells and whistles that you can think of. All of our fields, we use ladybugs instead of pesticide. We use bees to pollinate all of our flowers. So we're doing our part to try and help the environment and to have the best tasting pickle we can offer. The next year promises to be an exciting and delicious one in the 100 mile market that is our greater Bay Area. It's really great that people are wanting to know where their food is coming from, how it's being prepared, what the process is, and not only their food, but their wines as well. They want local, family-owned businesses that are in love with their product and that give back to the community. From retail consumers to restaurant consumers to the chefs and buyers that control all of that stuff, real food is, it's a real conversation now. It's not really a fad anymore that people, people are asking questions. Where did my food come from? So transparency is huge. And when you don't have anything to hide, it's easy to be transparent.
These gardens are not just appealing to the eyes, they are appealing to your taste buds. And that's the point of the annual Edible Garden Tour. A walking tour of gardens sponsored by the group Slow Food Santa Cruz celebrates urban gardens that don't just feed the senses, but help feed households. Our mission is good, clean, fair food for all. So that's essentially what we're promoting with our chapter here in Santa Cruz. Good is sort of about taste, you know, about flavors and about health. Clean is about sort of the environmental impact of the food, organic, etc. And then fair really, I think, is the most complicated facet of that whole puzzle because you're talking about fair prices for the, that good and clean food, um, and also fair sort of labor mm -hmm. labor practices, and you know the folks that are growing and harvesting the food and making sure that 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 whole process has so social justice embedded in it. People come on the tour to get new ideas about anything from pest control organically to um, water, which is a huge issue for us um, in this area right now. So it's a great way to learn new tips and tricks from people that have been doing it longer. One of those experienced gardeners is Joe Coberly of Edible Ecoscapes. Joe's home garden was just one of many examples on the tour. It was a blank slate and a bunch of old shrubs and designed it to be um, perennial fruit tree production and annual production as well. It started with enjoyment and hobby and um, realized that I could do it for a living and spread the passion to other people. A lot of people start with a little planter box and that's kind of the easiest way and then have them pick the vegetables and fruits they want to grow and then give it a shot. Very popular movement, people are understanding it, lots more people are doing it, they're catching on, they're seeing how much you can get off of your land, the health benefits and just the enjoyment. Whether or not you really turn your yard into a food source, sharing smart gardening practices, such as stretching the water supply or choosing drought resistant and healthy fruits and veggies, is a fun way to be aware of the nature around us. And often, that nature is closer than we previously thought. We lose touch a lot of times with food in terms of, you can go to the grocery store and get you know, oranges year round, but really they have a seasonality and there's an important you know, connection to the land that I think has been lost in a lot of cases. So I think people having their own home gardens is a really great way to reconnect to the land and um, reconnect to where food comes from. Having the ability to grow your own food is essential to nutrition, to health, to our planet. Learn more at slowfoodsantacruz.com. Thanks for watching our first episode of 100 Mile Meals. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. If you'd like to learn more about our program and how you may participate, visit our online home. It's at our website, 100milemeals.com. I'm Romney Dunbar. Thanks for watching. Brought to you by Performance Food Service Ledyard, the leading food distributor for our 100 mile market.